All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started now. <clears throat> you should all uh, be able to see my screen here. Um, if you can't, uh, please let us know in the Q&A section at the bottom of the, your Zoom window. Um, what we're going to be covering today is uh, using Zapier to connect Woodpecker with Outlook. Um, this is uh, this was the most requested uh, application that uh, folks wanted to see Woodpecker connected to. So we're going to do a couple of scenarios. And uh, this time around, we've got uh, the um, actual Zap templates already built out, um, which we will uh, send you links to right after this. So they're all ready to go. OK, so without further ado, let's hop right in. Oops. There we go. OK, so what we're going to be covering today is effectively first, what is Zapier uh, in case anyone hasn't heard of it? And even if you have, I think this will be uh, helpful to kind of get a, a feel for what it is and what it is not and what it does. Um, the first scenario we're going to walk through is automatically uh, sending follow up emails from Outlook when a question, a woodpecker questionnaire is submitted. Um, the second scenario we're going to walk through is automatically creating draft emails in Outlook when a woodpecker questionnaire is submitted. And the purpose behind this is so that you can actually review the email uh, or modify it before it's sent out, just in case you want a little kind of uh, extra uh, human intervention and human checkbox to make sure that that's all good. Uh, and then finally, we'll leave the last part of this for um, Q&A. Uh, we, we have this scheduled for um, half an hour. Um, it's not probably going to take us the full half hour, uh, but then we'll stick around for as long as um, people have questions. And uh, and uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll learn some cool stuff today. Okay, so for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Alex. I'm the founder of Woodpecker. Um, I usually run our webinars, uh, mostly because I just really like to, um, but also uh, I uh, I love Zapier. I, I always tell people that I should be um, like kind of an unofficial spokesman for them, or they should be compensating me in some way, because all I do all day is talk about Zapier. Our whole business runs on Zapier, probably does the work of five uh, people that we don't have to hire because Zapier effectively automates everything. So I'm super excited about Zapier um, and that's why I really love doing these webinars. So um, nice to meet you all who I haven't met uh, before. All right, so just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you have any technical issues, if you can't see my screen right now, or if you can't hear me or um, anything in between, uh, click on that Q&A. And uh, Esther, who is my colleague, who many of you probably have met or heard from uh, previously as well, is on the line with us. She's going to be answering those and helping you out um, if you have any issues. Additionally, um, when you have questions about anything that I'm walking through, just put that question in the Q&A section as well. Um, I'm going to actually take them as they come up instead of waiting until the end. Um, so if I get uh, if I get some questions that pop up uh, uh, during uh, during the walkthrough here, I'll take them um, uh, real time instead of waiting until the end. Um, but uh, of course, at the end, if we still have questions, we'll cover those as well. OK. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> let's hop right into it. Firstly, what is Zapier? Um, the way to remember how to pronounce it, because uh, I've heard of I heard it a bunch of different ways, is that uh, their tagline is Zapier makes you happier. So uh, that's how uh, I believe that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, but Zapier is effectively a tool that helps you automate repetitive tasks between two or more applications without having to write any code. Um, it's basically a drag and drop interface uh, that allows you to specify automated workflows. Um, such that you can say when some event happens in one application, in one of my apps, um, Zapier can then tell another application to perform or do a particular action. And it can do this uh, any number of times. So I could have one uh, trigger event um, or trigger uh, step in my Zap, which is always the first uh, step in a Zap. And when I say Zap, I mean an automated workflow. That's what Zapier calls them. Um, I could have one trigger be the first step in my Zap, and then I could have as many subsequent actions, which are effectively um, tasks or things to do in uh, subsequent applications. So in this example, I just pasted kind of a picture of one of the workflows we're going to be walking through. I basically have the first step in my Zap um, being a new questionnaire submitted in Woodpecker. So whenever a new questionnaire is submitted in Woodpecker, this workflow is going to get triggered or kicked off. Then I put in a filter to actually only continue the Zap if the questionnaire that was submitted in this first step is uh, a particular questionnaire that I'm looking for. And then the third step here, which again is an action, is sending an email in Outlook. So again, just to point these out, the first step in our Zap is always going to be a trigger. Any subsequent steps after the first step are going to be actions. 
Okay. So once again, just a, just a kind of an overview here, Zapier basically is like glue between disparate applications um, that allows them to talk to each other and send each other information without requiring anyone to write any code um, and without you having to build out custom uh, stuff to connect them. Right. So it's, it's very cool. Um, and it, uh, it's, it's definitely changed, uh, changed the way we think about uh, running our business. <clears throat> Okay, let's. Um, I had this this other uh, this other uh, animation here. So this is a zap, right? A zap is a automated workflow. So what we're going to do now is hop into our first um, our first Zapier uh, uh, zap, where we're going to walk through our first scenario of sending follow up emails in Outlook when a new Woodpecker questionnaire is submitted. All right, so I'm actually going to pop out of my presentation here, and I'm going to go over to Zapier. So this should look uh, similar to what we just saw in that screenshot. Um, I've obviously built this Zap um, beforehand, um, but I'm basically going to walk you through um, exactly uh, how it works and how I set it up. Okay, so the first step in any Zap um, is, like I said, going to be your trigger. So I'm going to go to click on Edit here, so we can see all the details. When we define our trigger. Uh, in a zap, effectively, the first thing that we're going to do is going to specify the app that is going to be the trigger app for this zap or this workflow. I've chosen the Woodpecker app here. And when we click on event, there's actually only one event that can be a Woodpecker or it can be a, a trigger for the Woodpecker application. And that's new questionnaire submitted. So I chose new questionnaire submitted. And what I'm going to do next is click continue. And now it's going to prompt me to choose an account. So I've got a whole bunch of Woodpecker accounts linked to my Zapier application or to my Woodpecker Zapier application. Um, but if you don't, you'll see a new connect account button there. And at this point, this is where you would actually put your Woodpecker API key. So if I do connect a new account, I'll kind of just show you what this looks like. Now it's going to ask for your Woodpecker API key. And you can retrieve your API key um, from within the Woodpecker Word add-in, actually. So if you launch Word, launch the Woodpecker Word add-in, and then go to the menu and go to Settings, um, you'll see your API key right there. If you have any trouble finding that, just shoot us a, um, a, a chat message on our website. There's also a, a Help Center article on our Help Center that walks you through doing just this as well. OK, so once you've hooked up your account, you're going to click continue. And the the other part to note about um, a trigger step in any zap is that you want to pull in a test uh, event. OK, so what this means is that we want to effectively um, pull in a example submission for the Woodpecker questionnaire submission trigger so that we can actually uh, go to our subsequent steps and we can map different information from this uh, test event, okay? Now, what's important to know is that this test event is um, actually, uh, it's, 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 just a, it's just a test event, but it allows us to, like I said, map information from it to subsequent apps. Once we turn this zap on or this workflow on, that test event is uh, irrelevant now. Now, when the zap is on, and a new questionnaire is submitted through Woodpecker, um, the, that new questionnaire submission becomes the event, right? So it flows through the, the rest of the zap uh, as you would expect. So just stressing, just so people don't get confused, this is just a test event. We just need the test event so that we can map it to other, um, other uh, steps. Okay, so I'm gonna click continue here. Now, our first trigger step is done. What I'm going to do now is I set up a second uh, step here that is Zapier's filter. So, you, so Zapier has a whole bunch of off-the-shelf um, built-in tools, they call it. So they have a delay, they have filter, they have format. If I just search for Zapier here, we're going to see all the different things that they have. So they have filter, webhooks, which is probably nothing anyone's going to need. They have email, uh, delay, code, SMS, um, so all sorts of stuff that they weather even, all sorts of stuff that they make available. One of them is this filter step. So what this filter step allows me to do is effectively filter um, for uh, something that I specify, and it will only continue this the rest of the zap or the rest of the workflow if that filter criteria is met, okay? So what you can see here is that I have basically said only continue if the questionnaire name. And when I click on this drop down here, it's going to give me a list of all of the pieces of information from the first step, from the trigger step. 
Okay. Now, um, this is why we do the test event so that we can actually see all of the information coming through, uh, coming through to Zapier as part of the, uh, the trigger step. Okay. So you can see that here's a bunch of information from a test event. Your first name, John Smith, or you know, your first name, John, your last name, Smith, um, the questionnaire submitter's email, the questionnaire name. What I want to do is I'm setting up this filter such that I only want this step to continue if the questionnaire that has been submitted is the test new client engagement questionnaire. Okay. And you can see over here, I've got this guy pulled up. This is my test new client engagement questionnaire that I created in Woodpecker. And I only want this zap to continue or this, this workflow to really happen if someone is submitting a response for this specific questionnaire. Now, the reason that we add a filter here is because that this new questionnaire submitted in Woodpecker trigger is going to trigger for every Woodpecker questionnaire that is submitted that we've created. Okay, so this will happen no matter what. Any 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 questionnaire that we have created that someone submits, this is going to get triggered for. And so that's why we add the filter to make sure that we only are uh, doing our subsequent actions for instances where this questionnaire is actually submitted. Okay, so what I said is only continue if the questionnaire name exactly matches test new client engagement questionnaire. So I just literally typed that out. So I basically can choose in this uh, this matching piece here. I can do contains, does not contain, exactly matches, but I'll do exactly matches test new client engagement questionnaire. So now that I've set up that filter, once I click continue, continue I can test it out. So if I retest this filter, it's going to tell me what would have happened. So your zap would have continued because, see the sample data here, the questionnaire name is equal to test new client engagement questionnaire. And that's exactly what I said. I said only continue if the questionnaire name matches this. Okay. Any questions on any of this stuff? Again, just put, uh, put your questions in the Q&A section. I'll take a pause. I'll answer them. Um, but otherwise, uh, hopefully everyone's um, understanding. Okay, so now that we've set up the filter to only continue this zap if um, the questionnaire that's being submitted um, is uh, matches this test new client engagement questionnaire, we can then have the third step here be actually sending an email from Outlook. So what I did is I clicked on that little plus button here and it allowed me to select a action. And um, I now can choose the app that I want to uh, have this action be sent from. And I chose Outlook. And Outlook has a number of different uh, uh, actions that you can take. So you can create an event, a contact, draft email, send email, update contact. You could search for a contact. The one that I want, though, is to send an email. So I clicked on send an email. I click continue. And then again, I'm going to hook up my Outlook account. Um, and again, you just click on connect a new account here, and it's going to guide you through hooking up your Office 365 or your Outlook account. I'm going to continue here. And now what I did is I said, okay, I just kind of filled out, started filling out a couple of these, um, these form fields here. So this one here from email, it's going to, you can see here, it says, leave this blank to send from your own address. So I just left it blank so that it sends from my own address. Um, it allows you to put in a number of uh, emails that this email will go to. So what I did was I clicked on one of these and I went to the, um, uh, actually, before I say that, each, each uh, input field in a Zapier step allows us to, uh, gives us access to um, information in previous steps. So you can see that we're in step three right now, but if I click on that input, I've got uh, all the information from step one and I've got all the information from step two available to me that I can use to map. So if I click on the down arrow for step one, you can see that I've got, uh, I do show all options here, I've got the questionnaire submitter email. So if I just click on that guy, it's actually going to insert a reference to that uh, email parameter from the first step. So I already did that once in this first um, in this first input here. Um, so I don't need to do it again, but I'm basically just saying, okay, I want to send an email to the person that gave me their email in the questionnaire. All right. We can specify CCs, BCCs, uh, as well as a subject. So I just kind of made up this subject. I said, thanks for submitting your responses. And then for the email body, I basically says, hi. I said, hi, and then I mapped the uh, first name that actually came from the questionnaire itself. So again, if I go down here, you can see there's your first name. I just click on that guy and it's going to insert a reference to your first name. So now it'll say, hi, first name, 
And then thank you for taking the time to provide us with your information. Please see attached. All right. And then the final piece here is for the attachment. And this, this is the fun part. So whenever you see this little icon here, uh, it's a little file icon. Let's see if I can see if I can make it a little bigger. There we go. So this is a little file icon next to this attachment field. And this file icon indicates that um, it is a Zapier file field. So if I click on that guy, it's going to take me to a little um, like article about what a file field is. But basically what's really cool about this is it allows me to pass in a, uh, a link to a file or an actual file into this input box. And Zapier is smart enough to actually download that file and include it as an attachment in this case. So what I can do is if I click on the woodpecker step, there is a uh, item here called the first populated template file. So if I click on that, which is what I did, it's going to basically insert a reference to that to that populated document where this attachment is. And now Zapier is smart enough to take that document that was generated and attach it as an attachment to the email. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm seeing no questions. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to continue here and then it's going to allow me to test this. Okay. So I already um, actually already tested this. So I know it works. Uh, so I'm going to close this and uh, let me just publish the zap so that we can turn it on. Okay, and now I'm actually gonna test it uh, in real life. So we can see that the zap was published. It's on right here. So we should be good to go. So when I submit a questionnaire, uh, when I submit a questionnaire response, we should filter to make sure that it's from this questionnaire and then we should automatically send an email and outlook. So let's give it a try. I'm going to go over to this questionnaire here. I'm going to put in, uh, put in my email address here. I'm just going to fill out some example data. Say John Smith, Boston. Let's say gender is male. And then here's a quick example, shameless plug for our conditional, uh, conditional questions and conditional logic. I select married for the marital status and I get a spouse name or Jane Smith. I'm going to go ahead and submit this questionnaire. Okay, so now what's happening is that this questionnaire has been submitted and Zapier will pick up that submission in this trigger step. And then we'll move on to the filter and we'll check to see if the name of the questionnaire is test new client engagement questionnaire, which it is. If I just refresh this, we can see it. Uh, you can see it right there. And um, then if it is, it's going to move down to the Outlook step and it should automatically send an email in Outlook. So if we come back over here, what we should do is see the, um, we should see an email pop up here uh, any second now. Um, so that's my, that's my Outlook uh, inbox, um, but I have it just going to, uh, I have it, uh, that's where I'll receive the email, okay? So um, while we wait for that, um, if anyone has any questions on how I set that up, please feel free to put those uh, in there. Um, and uh, there we go. Okay, so here's one. Um, what did you say the icon stands for? So let me come back over here uh, to the um, to that uh, icon field type. So I'm going to just edit this zap again. We can, a uh, little uh, notification just popped up. So I think I got the email, but let me cover this real quick. So if I come down here and I, uh, I can see this little icon on the field, uh, if I click on it, it takes me to a, a, uh, uh, a different article and it's a file field. So this is actually a article about all the different field types in Zaps. So you can see that there's date time fields, there's number fields, there's true false fields. It's actually kind of similar to how woodpecker field types work, um, but there's file field types. And each one of these, uh, a field in Zapier will be marked with any one of these icons, and that basically gives it certain powers. So the file field effectively allows you to pass in either, you can see, um, it, it, you can pass in text, you can pass in a URL, or you can pass in an actual file. And Zapier is smart enough to actually download the file that is at a URL mm -hmm. and then um, attach it to uh, the um, email in this case. Hopefully that helps. Cool. Um, all right. So let me pop over to Outlook because I think we got an email. So you can see that here is that email that I just received. It says, thank you for submitting your responses. It's to me, from me. Um, here is that attached document that was generated for us. 
And then it says, hi, John, thanks for taking the time to provide us with your information. Please see attached for our uh, engagement letter and let me know if you have any questions. So that's a very basic example of how we can actually get this workflow to run. We have the questionnaire getting submitted. We filter for only a specific one. And then we send an email to the uh, submitter of the questionnaire, um, including the final document. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's move on to the second. Uh, I'm going to come back over here. That was our first app. All right, we're going to move on to our second app, which is very, very similar, except that instead of sending an email, we're actually going to create a draft. Okay, so here's that zap, uh, or sorry, here's a second zap, um, which is going to look almost identical, except the only difference is that this says create draft email in Microsoft Outlook versus the one that we just looked at says send email in Microsoft Outlook. All right, so I'm not going to go through the first steps because we already covered those, but I'll just look at this one so we can kind of take a look at what it looks like. The only difference here is that for my event, instead of doing send email, I clicked create draft email. Okay. So now when I move down to set up account, same thing, set up action, same kind of stuff, except that I'm basically creating a draft email with the information that, um, that has been submitted from uh, the first step um, instead of actually submitting or sending the email um, immediately. All right. So... Let's see, why is this not loading for me? Let's try this again. Let's, there we go. Okay, so you can see that I'm creating a draft email. Same thing, I've got my two email here and I just map the email from the woodpecker, the first woodpecker step here, the trigger. And then I've got uh, same kind of stuff here. Thanks for submitting your response. Hi, first name. And then there's my attachment. Again, with that file type field, all I have to do is specified that the first populated template file should go in there and Zapier will attach it as an attachment. I'm not going to test it because we're good to go. So um, this actually kicked off uh, when I um, submitted this questionnaire as well because I have it hooked up to the same thing. So if we pop over to drafts, we should actually see that here as well. So if I click on this draft, you can see that I've got this draft created to this person uh, with the um, attachment there. There's the subject and there's the body with hi, John, et cetera. So once this looks good to me, I could just click send and send it off to that, that person. So the idea is that um, this kind of just depends on your workflow. If you want to have uh, an email immediately sent or if you want to have a draft created for you, um, then, uh, then you can do either of those things, okay? Anyone has any other questions on any of those, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, we will uh, move down to um, kind of what some other zaps and zap templates look like, as well as how to get a hold of these two templates. So if I move over to our website here, um, if you're on our website and you navigate to uh, integrations, the integrations page, this is what you're going to see. So if you scroll down, you'll see a little Zapier section here. So there's a whole list of um, Zapier templates. Uh, and again, these are different than Woodpecker templates. These are zap templates, meaning we have actually created this workflow for you and this workflow for you and turn them into what Zapier calls templates such that you can actually just use that, that zap by um, using the template we built you. So uh, if we scroll down here, you can see, um, let's see, these aren't all the ones that I want. So let me see if I can go find some more. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna type in Outlook here. Here we go. Okay, so if I just search for Outlook, it's gonna show me all of the templates that we've actually created, the Zap templates we've created um, that you can use uh, You can use off the shelf. So um, the first one I wanna look for is a, uh, let's see, send, this is the one, send, my, sorry, this is the one. Send follow-up emails in Microsoft Outlook when a new user, when a new Woodpecker questionnaire is, is submitted. And then here is the draft one, create a draft email in Outlook for newly submitted Woodpecker questionnaires. So if I wanted to use one of these, I could just click on use this Zap, and it's actually going to take me into Zapier, and it's going to uh, load up that Zap for me. And so at this point, all I have to do is it's already built for me. I just have to hook up my account right here. I just have to hook up my account right here, and then I can turn it on, <clears throat> and that's it. Um, we would obviously want to also specify which questionnaire we want to filter for. So we would just specify that here. But the idea is that we've already done most of the work for you. Um, and you just have to click on use this zap and uh, it will automatically be loaded up for you. <clears throat> okay, 
All right. Um, so the last part here is uh, if I come back over to our to our Zap section here, um, you can come over to this page and search for any templates that we have that we previously built. We built a bunch of them um, by searching for the application that you want to connect Woodpecker with. Um, if there if we don't have one for what you want, please let us know. Um, we're happy to, uh, we're constantly building these and uh, we're happy to build whatever templates that you might need, as well as walk you through um, setting up any of these zaps. Um, Esther is available uh, to any of you at any time to uh, try, probably offering up uh, offering up her time a little liberally, but um, she's available to you at any time uh, uh, to help you set up um, uh, any Zapier zaps that you're actually trying to create and you know troubleshoot them as well. So let us know if we're missing something and if you want us to create a new a new template for you. Okay, uh, one other question here. Uh, so can it download files uh, from a URL that requires a login? Um, for example, from OneDrive or SharePoint? That's a good question. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and say off the top of my head, I think that the answer is no, um, because if it's not a publicly available URL, I don't know that Zapier, I don't think Zapier can actually download it. Now, what I will say is um, if I'm pretty sure that in OneDrive and SharePoint, you can actually um, create a publicly accessible URL. And if it's publicly accessible, then Zapier can get a hold of it. Um, but if it's not, I venture to say that you can't, but that might be a question um, better suited to Zapier support. They'd probably have a better answer and a better workaround for you. But off the top of my head, I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict that the answer is no. Um, do we have pre-built zaps for Pipedrive and Woodpecker? I think the answer to that is no, but let me go ahead and look. We might. We actually use Pipedrive internally. Uh, so we don't. We don't have any pre-built zaps. Um, however, you can see you can actually just create your own here. So if you click on that little button, it's going to say, okay, well, here's the things you can do with Woodpecker and Pipedrive. So you could say, all right, well, when a new questionnaire is submitted, we could say, you know, update a person or update organization or update deal or whatever it is. And if I click connect Woodpecker and Pipedrive, it should prop up an example zap for me. So it's going to walk you through how to do that. Connect your apps, set up your zap, turn on your zap. Let's get started. And so now, again, this is kind of like a very nice wizard of how to set this up. It'll walk you through like, okay, which, which account do you want to use for Woodpecker? Let's say I want to use this guy. Uh, and then it'll say, um, it's getting some data from Woodpecker. Then it'll say, which account do you want to connect to Pipedrive? And then it's going to walk you through setting up your Zap. So it's actually, I actually haven't seen this. This is actually a very nice um, kind of wizard for setting this up. So I think in, in general, the rule of thumb is if you're searching for something and we don't have it, just follow the uh, the create your own workflow and pipe or uh, zap your does a pretty good job of walking you through it. Okay, um, and with that, um, that's all we were going to cover today, folks. So we will hang out for as long as people have questions. Um, but if not, we really appreciate you joining. And um, Esther is going to go ahead and reach out to each of you after this to see if you need any help um, with setting up your zaps, as well as links to our um, to our templates that we walked through today. Once again, you can find those on our integrations page here um, just by searching for Outlook. But in case uh, you forget, or in case it's easier just to have a link to them, Esther will send those to you guys as well. Okay. Uh, and then here is another one last question. Is there a uh, repository of recordings from other webinars? Um, good question. So we do have the, um, we did a um, Woodpecker and Clio Zapier uh, webinar as well, and happy to make that link available to you. Um, just reach out to us if you're on uh, our website here. You can just ask here in our chat widget, um, or when Esther reaches out to you, just ask her, and she can send you the link to that. Um, otherwise, we do have a list of on-demand sessions on our website here as well, where um, we've recorded and made available a whole bunch of sessions. So this is a little bit of an old Zapier and Woodpecker um, session that we ran, but I think still relevant. Um, and then some of these on here are uh, from old webinars or from trainings that we've done. Um, so I think this is the closest thing to repository of recordings um, from other webinars and sessions uh, that, that you can find. Um, but again, it's under our learn section and then on demand sessions um, and you can download and use those. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, like I said, we'll hang out for any other questions that folks have here, but otherwise, um, thank you very much for coming out.
Okay, not seeing any other questions. So we're going to hop off here. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. We will talk to you soon.